We're slow when others are quick and quick when others are slow. Corporate bond markets are characterised as being short-termist in nature. Now this can lead to the neglect of long-term risks, but more importantly, long-term opportunities. Identifying these long-term opportunities requires us to think about the trajectory of the company we're thinking about lending to. How do we foresee it will grow in terms of both scale and scope, in terms of diversification, and in terms of its balance sheet? And because so many of our peers are focused on the short-term perspective, having a differentiated approach can result in identifying aspects that the market is not really picking up on. So we're slow when others are quick, but we're also quick when others are slow. For example, a company may be thinking about an imminent asset sale that will fundamentally transform its balance sheet. Or it may be that we've identified that the actual credit metrics, the underlying financials of a business, have improved such that we think there's quite a high likelihood of a rating agency upgrade. In such scenarios, you have to be quick. We are active managers, but that doesn't mean that we're frenetic. The average refresh rate on this portfolio per annum is about a third. This is a far cry from the 100% turnover that many of our peers run with and the associated trading costs, which of course accompany that. When we say we join the dots at Bailey Gifford, what we really mean by that is that we channel our efforts and focus on areas of change within the market. Often in markets you'll find there is a particular sector out of favour, but if you look within that sector, you'll quite often find opportunities because there will be companies which offer value. Another example is the way that we think laterally about the evolution of business models. We might find a high yield company which is likely to be bought by a stronger investment grade rated company. So daring to dream of industry evolution presents a positive pursuit. So another example of how we join the dots is where we see companies and new management teams have been brought in. We actively seek them out, we meet the management team, we question them and we challenge the validity of their new policies. Can they actually improve these businesses? If we meet these companies and the answers to those questions are yes, then those companies will form part of our portfolio. Joining the dots can't just be about a look to external factors. We need to join the dots internally as well. And we do that at Bailey Gifford through collaboration. Fixed income investors and equity investors show this collaboration through sharing company research, sharing company meetings, but most importantly, sharing discussion forums. This provides us often with a left of field insight, which we wouldn't otherwise have, and gives us a differentiated approach to bond investing. No markets are perfectly efficient. Inefficiency is always present. Indeed, there are particular areas where inefficiency is exacerbated. You may call these zones eddies, if you will, where bonds are swept from time to time, where you find the fundamentals are actually not reflected by the yield that is on offer for those particular bonds. And it is to these zones of inefficiency, the eddies, that we direct our prospecting efforts. The first one is that of the betwixt and between. So within corporate bond markets, they are segmented between investment grade and high yield investors. Investment grade investors are often quite wary of plumbing the lower depths of the investment grade market. Likewise, within the more risk seeking high yield market, fund managers that are purely focused upon that market are more sort of adverse to purchasing the duller bonds at the higher end of that market the buyers are segmented and therefore their willingness to own bonds within that sector is actually less than say a fund like ourselves where we find it a very rich opportunity. So the second eddy is that of misrated bonds. Rating agencies provide a very valuable function within bond markets. However, they're not infallible and they can be slow to identify change. If one can identify change in the credit metrics of a particular company before that of the rating agencies, that can offer some great opportunities for investors. If opportunities are strong in rated bonds, then in unrated, they are even greater. So the third area is that of unrated bonds, namely those which fall outside of the indices of which most funds are being run against. 
The fourth eddy is that of convertible bonds. Now, what we often find with these bonds is that they're traditionally just held by convertible funds, and their focus is upon the equity upside. And so for ourselves, who are purely focused upon the yield, this can offer opportunity, and you can identify high quality companies on very attractive yields. So in a sense, we do celebrate an efficiency. At Bailey Gifford, we think it's really important to look at the companies we're considering lending to through the detail of a microscope. Good bond selection requires sound detective work. Well, what does that actually mean? It means distilling the information, reading the signals, and really trying to get to the truth of the situation. So largely we ignore the profit and loss account, and instead we focus on the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, where fewer accounting quirks can be enacted. We build detailed financial models for all the companies that we are considering lending to. Why do we do that? Well, we do that to ground management expectations and guidance and hard numbers. Can they actually deliver what they've told us they're going to deliver? Once we've done all that, we seek management out and ask them questions where we think information is deficient. The result of all of this is that it's the details that matter when choosing which companies to lend to. It's also key for corporate bond investment to view the world through a telescope, to have perspective on the overall outlook of bonds across the globe. Looking at the returns that are available across many different sectors, ratings, geographies, and then trying to understand how those yields are commensurate with the economic outlook for those geographies and sectors. Thinking also laterally, speaking to our colleagues on both the Rates and Currencies desk or the Multi-Asset desk to find out what their worldview is. These are the sorts of questions that we ask ourselves when thinking about asset allocating within this fund. It's a philosophy that we've followed since inception and will continue to do so.